Hey guys, and welcome to JTech WP. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use Rank Math, which is one of the top SEO plugins for Elementor. We're gonna verify the site with Google, add Google Analytics, do some SEO, add some site maps, and get your site ranking a lot higher. If you find this useful, please check out my online courses. I've got web design courses, video editing, and filming courses. Links are in the description below. Let's go. The first thing you wanna do is do a search for Google Search Console. And then we can click on the first one and press start now. Once you're inside the search console, click up here on this little arrow, add a property. I prefer to use this one. I use domain, paste in the web address, remove the HTTPS and the forward slash, press continue. And it's now gonna generate a bit of code for us. So it's this bit of code here that we need. Copy that. Log into your cPanel. Then you want to look for Zone Editor. You can either find it in here or you can type in Zone up here to find it quickly. Press Zone Editor. And then just check that that's your domain name. Go to Manage. Press Add Record. Set the type to Text. Paste in the value here from Google, and then you just wanna make sure that you've got your domain name from here. So copy that and paste that in here. Press add record. All right, so you should see it's saved. I now go back to verify domain. Press verify. And there you go, it's done. We can now go to the property leave this tab open because we're gonna come back to it later on and add our sitemap. Next, I'm gonna open Google Analytics. Okay, and we wanna click on this one here. This will open all my analytics properties. To add a new one, go to admin. I've already got uh, an account created. If you haven't got one, create one here. And then what I wanna do next is create a property. Press create property. And then we're gonna give it a name, which is normally the website name. So add in your website name. Press next. Fill in the details to your business. Press create. You can choose a platform. I'm gonna go for web, because it's a website. Now, and this is where we enter in your URL. Make sure you take the HTTPS out of there and the backslash out of there. Make sure if you are using HTTPS, that is selected and give the stream a name. Again, I'm gonna use my website name. Press create stream. And what we're looking for now is the gtag.js. We're gonna copy this. I'm going to log into the back end of the website, go to Elementor, and we're looking for custom code. Add new custom code. And then we're going to make sure that head is selected. Paste in our code. And what I'm going to do for the title is call it Google Analytics. And press publish. And we want to make sure that it's set to entire site, save and close. We're now going to add rank math. So I go to plugins, add new, search for rank math. And we're looking for this one here. It's got a lot of good reviews, lots of installation. So we know it's fantastic. Install now. Activate. Connect your account. Okay, so we're going for the free plan. Activate now. I normally go with advanced. Press start wizard. If you've been previously using Yoast, you can import the data. If not, don't worry, you can press skip and don't import now. I'm just gonna fill in the shop details. You could upload your logo here if you wanted to or your default social media. 
save and continue. Now we're going to connect to Google services. Then choose your Google account. Press allow. And it should, after a couple of seconds, find your site in the profile. There we go. It's selected our site. You can manually add it here if you need to, but normally this method works for me. If you want to, you can now enable email reports, which is a nice new feature. So every so often it sends you an email telling you how your site's doing. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want the reports coming in. Save and continue. Leave all this on the default settings. Save and continue. Leave these on defaults. Save and continue. And that's it. We're ready to go. So I'm going to return to the dashboard. And you'll see now we've got Rank Math activated. Next, we want to add our sitemap to Google. So I go to sitemap settings. The first time you install Rank Math and set it up, you'll see it's going to take it a bit of time to import all the data. What we need to do is give this sitemap to Google. I'm going to copy this. Go back to our Google Search Console. Go to sitemaps. And we see it's blank. Enter your sitemap here, paste in the one we just copied, press submit. Okay, so if it doesn't say success straight away, just give it a couple of seconds and refresh your browser. I'm also going to go back to the page, open up the sitemap, and this will give us all our other sitemaps that we can add, like the posts will be your blogs the pages, products if you've got WooCommerce and categories if you've got WooCommerce. So I'm just going to add these in as well. Copy our posts one. And you can paste them all in here. Go back, get our page sitemap. Copy link address. Paste in our page sitemap. The page sitemap is one of the most important ones to put in. Products, if you've got the WooCommerce. There's our product sitemap. And we've also got a product categories for this specific site. So you see there, if it couldn't fetch it, refresh it, and it should go green after a moment. And that's it, that's your sitemap submitted to Google and Rank Math connected. With Rank Math installed, we can now go to Pages. We should see there's some new options here. To customize what you see, go to Screen Options. I would recommend turning on SEO Details, SEO Title, and SEO Description, as this will show you a little bit more information. Press Apply. We also want to go and configure some more settings. I go to Rank Math. Titles and Meta, and then we want to go to Local SEO, and this is where we can kind of customize the business page part of the SEO. So you'd fill in your website URL, try and make sure that this matches your Google business listing because this will help your ranking. So you'd fill in your email, so you fill in your details exactly as it appears on Google. You put your business type, set your opening hours, add your phone number, add your price range. So I use pounds, so I'd put pounds in. Select an about page if you've got one. If you've got a contact page, enter that. The Google Maps API key, that's quite tricky to set up. Well, I'm not going to cover that in this one, but if you do have an API key, drop it in there. Coordinates, you could put the exact grid reference of your property or your business in here, and then save changes. Once you've set that up, we can now go to pages. In pages, scroll down to the page you want to edit. I'm going to start with this one, which is my online course for how to build websites fast. Press edit in Elementor. And we see here's our page. And over on the left, we've got a new option called SEO. At the moment, our score is pretty low because we haven't given it a keyword. And the way this SEO system works is it tells you what you're doing wrong and what you need to do to fix it. First thing I'm going to do is add my keyword in which is going to be how to build an awesome website fast. Okay, so I've added that in and we can see straight away it's gone from like a red 
to kind of an amber, we've gone from like 16 to 66% out of 100, which is a good improvement. You also see that a couple of these have lit up as well. Focus word in the URL. If that's doing red, I'll show you how to fix this. Edit snippet. There's our permalink. If I took out the fast, you see the score's gone down. See, um, the focus word was not found in the URL, so you could fix that by going edit snippet, just add in your keyword with a dash in between each one like that, and that's going to help quite a bit. I'm now going to fix the meta description. We can see there, there's our keyword, and then we've got edit snippet, and this pulls up an example of a Google advert. So it's showing you how your advert would be displayed on Google. One of the things I'm going to put in is make sure my keywords are in the description. So I could have learn how to build an awesome website fast. And look at that, did you see that? Something moved on the left. It's kind of happy now that we've got the keyword in the meta description, but we'd still need to add more here. This little bar is like um, an indication of where you're at with your description. If it's in the red, you need to add more text and it'll start to go green as I start typing. Bear in mind that you're only limited to 160 characters. So what I do is I go onto my page, I'll copy a bit of text that my copywriter made. So I'll copy the section here. I can drop that into our description. Okay, we see if you put too much in, it goes red. So we've got 14 words that we need to get rid of. So I could probably take out that. And now we see it's starting to go green. So our description reads, learn how to build an awesome website fast. Effectively build a WordPress website using the Elementor Pro Page Builder. And I might change that to something like step by step guide. And you can see as I'm typing, the bar's going more green. And I'm pretty happy with that, to be fair. That's actually a reasonably good score. Close the window. And you see we're now up to about 68 out of 100. So it's improving all the time. Next, it's telling me that our content is a little bit too short. So 584 words and we need at least 600. So by adding another 26 words to this, I could probably get that to go green. I added in another paragraph down here. And as you can see, our content has now gone over 600 words. So it's good. It hasn't quite gone green. We could add a bit more text to make it happier. But let's have a look at what other things it's recommending. So click the little triangle to expand. Your focus keyword was not found in subheadings like H2, H3, and H4. So this is our title tag. If I click on that, that's classed as a H1. That's your, like your main heading or your main page title. If I scroll down, this one, if I click on it, we can see it's a H3. So by adding in our keyword here, we should get a few more points. Again, this is another heading. You can see that's a H2. So these are the tags that it's referring to. I'll update that. We'll go back to our SEO. We'll see how it's looking now. So it's also telling us that we haven't got an image with our focus keyword as alt text. If you have got images on your page, we can add these in the media library. So I can go to media library. For example, if I click on this image, we'll see there it's got an image title. This is one of my previous videos, how to protect your website from hackers. So if, if that was our keyword, how to protect your website from hackers, I could put that in the alt text here and then that would get updated in the SEO. Here's my online course thumbnail. You can click on this image. We'll add that into the alt text. Close that window. Go back to our page. And if I go add a thumbnail in here, add in our image, choose it. And it's that one there, insert media, update. Go back to our SEO. Let's have a look now. We can now see another red light's gone out, which is really good. It is telling us we need to put our keyword in the text a little bit more. So I could put another paragraph in, but don't go too crazy. You don't want to have like how to build a website fast, like 20 times in the text, because that'll just annoy your users. Right, internal links, yes, we could fix that pretty quickly. I could put a button somewhere on the page. 
So I could put a call to action or contact. I'll just put a button in for now so you see. We'll add in our button and we'll call that contact. Link it to the contact page. And this will class it as an internal link. Press update. Go back, check our SEO. We should see that we've got another one that's green. You are linking to other resources on your website, which is great. You haven't used this focus keyword before, so it's all starting to look a lot better now. Your SEO title doesn't contain a number. Okay, so if you're not sure about something, you can click on it. And there we go, it says headlines with numbers are 36% more likely to generate clicks according to research by conductor. So I can maybe put learn how to build an awesome website fast in two hours as a title. That might be a possibility because the course is two hours long. So you just follow this guide on the left hand side and you should drastically improve your SEO because we started off with 16% and we're now up to 81. I think by adding a bit more content, we can get it quite a bit higher and upping our keyword density would help a little bit too. So just follow the guide on here. If you're not sure about something, click on the question mark and it should explain it. Once the page has been tweaked, we can go exit to dashboard, press leave, press the W. Here's our page that we just optimized. We can now see that this one's gone green. It's showing us our keyword here. It's telling us it's an article. It's got one link on it. It's using the automatic title and description and site name. And then there's our meta description that we put in earlier. Any pages that you haven't done will show NA and they won't have any of these details in here. One more way we can boost our ranking even higher is by using schema markup. I'm just going to copy the text from my description. Copy that. Close that window there. And then up here, we've got this little icon. If I click on this, it's called schema. So you see there, it's got like an article. If I delete this and press schema generate, it'll give us a load of different options. So we can tell Google if it's an article, a book, a course, an event, job posting, and so on. I'm going to say this is a course, because that's what mine is. If yours is an article, you check article. I press course, put my description in there. I put how to build an awesome website fast. Put that as my headline title. I maybe put in using Elementor Pro in the title down there. Course provider, I'm a person, not an organization. Course provider name, so I could put John Siddle. Course provider URL, paste my web address in. Ratings, I could put my average rating in from Udemy, which I think is 4.74. Minimum rating was three, and my maximum rating is five for the course. Save this post. And now Google's gonna know that, okay, it's an online course, and press update. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.